Now you put your left leg in, you put your left leg out, then you shake it all about. But it's not the hokey cokey, it's the Labour Party. Where left wingers who either felt the party wasn't for them or who were actively excluded are now returning to the fold. So with Comrade, Comrade Corbyn at the helm, is it now time for committed activists to take back control of the party and for grassroots democracy to blossom? And are Labour MPs right to fear they might face deselection if they don't get with the new programme? Re-entering the Labour fray after 25 years on the outside is trade union leader Mark Sarwatka. This is his take of the week. <laughs> Tony Blair rather stupidly said that anyone who supported Jeremy Corbyn should get a heart transplant. I'm actually a patient who's waiting for a heart transplant. And not only do I support Jeremy Corbyn, after 25 years I've rejoined his Labour Party. Because now the days of new Labour are well and truly behind us. We're now entering a really exciting political moment where opposition will be really left-wing. Unlike the Tony Blair years, where he worshipped the private sector and had Peter Mandelson telling us how relaxed he was about people being filthy rich. Hundreds of thousands of people voted for Jeremy Corbyn because he represents an alternative to austerity. Austerity that has meant a million people using food banks, many people desperately needing houses, and in the public sector, where we've seen a decade of pay restraint and hundreds of thousands of people lose their jobs. And the many hundreds of thousands of people who, like me, are excited by this new politics deserve to see a Labour Party that is united and supports their leader. That's not a purge, that's actually democracy. And those of the right of the party, bleating about purges, should reflect on their own past. It was they who used to support the parachuting in of new Labour supporting candidates into constituencies against the will of local activists. Spread the word around. Get the back in, town. in fact, during the Tony Blair and Gordon Brown era, we saw a cynical abuse of power where the leadership would impose like-minded candidates onto local parties, often without even asking the opinion of local party members. Contrast that approach to the one that I support, which is in a democracy local party members should decide who represents them. If people want Chucker Amuna or Tristram Hunt, that's their right. But if, like me, they want radical representatives who support Jeremy Corbyn, then they should be allowed to choose them. Indeed, given the government's boundary changes, many local parties are going to have to choose their new MPs to stand in the election. I think it's essential that no obstacles are put in any party's way so that people can choose who they want. Spread the word around. Yes, back in town. And now we hear about those MPs scheming to keep Jeremy Corbyn off the ballot paper in the event there has to be a new leadership election. This just goes to show how scared of Jeremy's popularity some of these MPs are. So a few hundred MPs may not like Jeremy Corbyn, but they need to remember that hundreds of thousands of party members do, and indeed they voted for him. And people should remember it's their party too. From Bookmark Socialist Bookshop in Bloomsbury to making little to no mark on political <coughs> discourse on this week, Mark Sarwatka joins us now. Welcome to the programme. Hi. So, Jess, are you glad to see uh, Mark back in the Labour Party? Oh, I'm delighted when people come back. Uh, we've had not as many as in London, there seems to have been thousands of people in London seats rejoined. We've had about, you know, sort of 40 or 50 new members and I'm delighted that new people join the Labour Party. I very much hope that you're getting out and delivering leaflets, Mark. Well, he's got a, he's got a bag with it. Well. <laughs> uh, I mean, you were barred from voting in last year's leadership election on the grounds that you didn't share the aims and values of the Labour Party. So have you changed your views or has the party changed since Mr Corbyn's election? Oh, I think the party's changed since his election, but the irony of being barred was that it was never explained to me what these aims and values were that I didn't share. I wasn't asked, nobody spoke to me. I just got a letter saying mm. you may have voted, but we're not going to count it anymore. But you've not changed? 
I haven't changed and I'm tremendously excited about the <coughs> fact that I can now join a party where the leader and his shadow chancellor are quite clear. They want economic alternatives to austerity. They want a fairer, more equal society. And I think that's a very exciting moment in British politics. If you haven't changed, are you a Marxist? No, I would call myself a radical socialist. What's the difference? Well, I believe that uh, we need to see a radical change in the way society is ordered. I think we should have a society run in the needs of the many, not just the profits for the few at the top. And I think we need to see some real changes, all of which I think Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell are advocating. I mean, you've been associated with uh, various Trotskyite groups in the past. Um, are, are those who have Trotskyite history or connections, uh, do you feel now welcome in the Labour Party? Well, Peter Mandelson was a member of the Young Communist League. I think Jack Straw was a member of the Communist Party. But they changed their views. You've told me you haven't changed. I haven't changed. Well, I haven't changed my views in terms of what I fought for for the last no. 20 years, which so is to different. see a fairer society. <coughs> but we're all being young. We all sometimes felt things we were younger that maybe we don't feel in the same way now. But I've joined the Labour Party, not because... I think there will be a socialist revolution, but because I think we actually have the prospect in Britain in 2020 of a Labour government that's very radical, that can make a change for millions and millions of people in this country, and that's why it's so exciting. You don't think Labour can win in 2020? Oh, yeah, well, at the moment, I think if you look at the polls and if you look at the gerrymandering, if, if you will, that the Tory party are doing with the boundaries that you just you talked about, it's going to disproportionately affect Labour seats. And the it's polls be at the moment, though, and what's happening in Scotland. The polls in hard. 2016 can't tell you anything, surely, about 2020. Well, no, who knows? Maybe let's hope that the Tory party start to eat their own tails with the whole Europe thing, keep stoking it up. So why do you think you can't win in 2020? At, at the moment, it doesn't seem to me that the Labour Party is in any shape to be facing an election, but luckily we don't <coughs> have to till 2020. What do you say to that? Well, I think the Labour Party can win in 2020, and the main reason I think that is because if they stick with Jeremy Corbyn, what people will have in 2020 is a real political choice where they will see absolutely the difference between what the Tories are advocating and what a radical Labour government are advocating. And my problem in the past elections was that whilst there was a difference between the parties, there was such a consensus towards the centre that many people didn't vote Conservative, they didn't vote, or tragically they voted UKIP. And so I think that with four hundred, years to get those ideas across... In the 100 seats exciting. with the lowest turnout, yeah. Labour has 96 of those seats already. So we absolutely... I mean, who knows what the seats are going to look like, as you've pointed out. But So we can absolutely increase our vote share, but we won't necessarily increase our seat share. And I think at the moment we're at real risk of really losing great swathes of the South, Great, you know, bits of Yorkshire that used to be Labour heartland and maybe... Why will you lose these? Well, we already did. <laughs> we did lose them. We've got to win them back. Well, well why won't you win them back? Well, I, I really, I can't see at the moment that the Labour Party, as is being presented at the moment, and I'm only reflecting what I hear on the doorstep, and some of that will be coming from media pressures, I understand all of that, but at the moment, I don't think the Labour Party is cutting through. I think the, the Conservatives are much better presenting hope, which to me, as a socialist, seems unbelievable that they could present hope to anyone when they're, you know, damaging thousands of disabled people, you know, there's people queuing up who can't find houses but uh, the, the Labour Party is not cutting through the message is not getting through we are talking okay. to the converted is it good news for the Conservatives if people like Mark are rejoining the Labour Party well I'm, <coughs> I'm afraid absolutely it is <laughs> but but for, to begin with I want to kind of analyze what Mark has said he's saying there's a, pl a place for an anti-austerity party I think it's an interesting argument because I think this Parliament is going to have more austerity now than yeah. we predicted before. It's not going as well for the Chancellor as he hoped. And anti-austerity parties have done quite well in Greece and Spain and so on. So I understand the proposition. However, against that, one has to say that the British public, you know, I think, has a pre pretty clear political position on the centre ground. This, the British public would not vote for Ed Miliband. They would not vote for mm -hmm. Neil Kinnock. They would not even vote for Gordon Brown. The only one they voted for, again and again and again, was Tony Blair. 
Uh, and I think this is a fact of life. And even if we go through a five-year parliament, which for many people is pretty grim, there is no evidence in the history of the British voting patterns that they're going to vote for a, a well left-wing okay, candidate. Let, let Mark respond to that. Well, I'm an optimist, and I think, <laughs> and I think they will. I think, I, think, I think there's a global phenomenon going on. I mean, who would have thought that Bernie Sanders in America could be winning states in the Democratic Party? Yeah, but he primaries? isn't winning. Hillary Clinton's winning the nomination. No, but he's doing better than anybody would have believed a few years back. Yeah, but he's still not winning. And look what's happening elsewhere. The, the right is rampant in France now, even in Sweden, in Finland, Poland, Croatia, um, growing uh, in, in other parts of Europe too. Uh, there's no mass Marxist revival. Well, my argument is, and let's take Ed Miliband as an example, people mm. didn't vote for Ed Miliband because he was too left-wing in my view. In my view, I think they thought there's two parties broadly offering within the this, this same narrow constraints, the same economic solutions, differences were marginal. And I think many people thought, well, if that's what we're being offered, we'd rather go with the true believers. The what Jeremy Corbyn will offer is something totally and utterly different. And when people realise that if they vote for that, they're going to get more investment in their public services, there's going to be better investment in schools and hospitals and in the care Provide, in the Provided community. you can create the wealth that will pay for that. Yes, and I think that... And that's uh, what we're still waiting to find out. Well, I think there's... It's easy some... to talk about investment. It's more difficult to create the money that will pay for the investment. Well, I think what we, or I certainly believe, I think is if you have a fairer taxation system, if you get people into work earning decent wages and paying tax and you can raise revenue and you don't obsess about clearing the deficit in some ridiculously small period of time, not working. the economy can grow. And I think that's what people need to hear about. Now, I agree with Jess. Jeremy probably isn't cutting through, but to be honest, he's not getting the chance to put this alternative to the people because too much of the stories we're getting are briefings against him. We're being sidetracked by things that I think are non-issues, like singing the national anthem, to be honest. Yeah, and what I I'd agree. like to know is let's get the debate in the public about economic alternatives, give some hope to people, and we could see politics transformed in Britain. The Labour Party's got a lot of new members, <coughs> uh, and there are boundary changes coming up, which will give these new members a chance mm -hmm. uh, to choose new candidates if they want. Yep. Why shouldn't they? I'm not saying that they shouldn't. I think every Labour Party has the democratic right to hold a... Where new seats are created, and seats are completely, you know, they're very diverse, and so it's only right that the new body of membership should be able to look at uh, who so, their members So you won't mind want. if Chuka Muno, Tristram Hunt, Chris Leslie, Emmy Re Emma Reynolds, Liam Byrne and Stella Chrissy are targeted by the new membership? To be I think the use of the word targeted, I would mind. And what I would say is if well, they're targeted, expect them to fight back and expect people to fight with but them. But they haven't got the membership. Well, I, I mean, again, I can't predict what they're going to have, can I? Mean, I mean, there is a different membership in the Labour Party now, isn't it? It's changed. Well, it's clearly 100,000 new, new joiners, and I think that... A lot of them are in London, certainly. aren't they? No, no, but even, uh, you yeah, know, there's, there's large swears of the country where Labour Party membership's massively increased. Now, my view about this is that you should be a Democrat. And so, as yeah. I said in the film, if Chakramuna's local party believe he's still Ooh. the man for them, they should have him. Yes. There shouldn't be anything from the top where any candidates... Leave it to the constituency. So and I think my point in the past was we did see in positions, and certainly when I lived in Yorkshire, where a constituency selected a left-wing candidate like Liz Davis in Leeds, mm -hmm. the Central Party ruled it out. And what I want to see is some democracy. Now, yeah. I would think what's inevitable is with so many new members going in who are excited by a change, mm -hmm. They'll want some change. they will want to see the MPs who represent them. We all them want democracy. I don't there. disagree with that. I do disagree with the idea of suddenly putting in mandatory uh, reselections. <coughs> but I don't think you've called for that. Yeah. You've just said the boundary changes give an opportunity. I mean, my, my view is, even without changing the rules, there's the boundary changes and the rules already allow you like mandatory reselection to trigger reselections if they wish do, do you want mandatory reselection? Well, well my own view is councillors have to be standing for reselection every four years I have to stand for election every few so years you do. I, I personally cannot see how anyone can argue <clears throat> that the candidate should be endorsed okay. every time by their local party but even without changing the rules and having mandatory reselection it's already the case that local party members can trigger a ballot to can change do so, it. And they will have more of the... I have one final quick question for you. If Mr Corbyn goes to the country in 2020 with a proper 
socialist manifesto of the type that you approve and Labour gets thumped again the way it did in 1983, will you accept that there's not an appetite for that kind of socialism in Britain? Well, I won't accept that my views will change. That I, oh, no, I didn't say that. I, uh, <laughs> what, what I would say is at that particular point, the electorate will make a specific mm. choice. And I'm a great believer, actually, that you should continue to campaign for what you believe in and hope to convince people. And if at first you don't try, keep <laughs> trying until you succeed is my mm. motto. Mm. And I'd rather fight for something that you really believe can have a fairer society than give up. I've done that for the last 35 years. Or have power. And I intend to carry on trying. Well. Mark, thanks for being with us, and it's good to see you back to health as well. Thanks very much. Yeah, and uh, hopefully next time I'll be on, I'll have my heart transplant, and we'll, we'll get rid of the yeah. electric. Well, you're box. looking, you're looking well on it. Thanks very much. Thank you.